Okay, so uh, look at a question for integrated reproductive health. We'll go straight into the question. Okay, so uh, the question reads, uh, Mrs. Olivia Oga, aged 40 years, father 8, has delivered a live bouncing baby girl weighing 4.3 kg and has delivered and has developed rather postpartum hemorrhage. Uh, question A, define postpartum hemorrhage. And question B, state five symptoms a patient may present with who has developed PPH. Question C, uh, explain five causes of postpartum hemorrhage. And question D, describe in details the management of Mrs. Uh, Olivia. Uh, and question E, explain five ways through which PPH can be uh, prevented during antenatal care and uh, labor. Okay, <clears throat> so we'll go straight and we'll start with question A. So question A is saying define postpartum hemorrhage. So we can define postpartum hemorrhage as this is the loss of blood of more than 500 mules vaginally following delivery of the baby or less than 500 mules of blood provided the loss of blood is enough to cause a compromise in the health of the mother. So with PPH, normal in normal circumstances, if this woman loses more than 500 mils of blood, uh, that would be too much to classify someone as having PPH. However, in certain circumstances, this woman may lose blood less than 500 mils, but then it cause a compromise to the mother's health that will also be termed as a postpartum hemorrhage. The next question is saying state five symptoms the patient may present with who has developed PPH. The first symptom, of course, is uh, severe pervaginal bleeding. So in this particular case, this is a common one where you see excessive uh, bright red blood just uh, gushing or coming out of the vagina. And this can come as a result of uh, maybe retained product of conception, tears or lacerations of the birth canal, as well as just atonic uterus because if the uterus is not contracting, it means that the blood vessels will not be blocked on the, on the area where the maternal site had implanted from, meaning this woman will continuously be bleeding. Apart from that, the other uh, symptom of PPH is hypotension. So with hypotension, this is uh, caused due to excessive loss of blood in which the uh, arterial blood pressure become more reduced. Apart from that, of course, you may also see anemia. And in this particular case, this is caused uh, because of excessive loss of uh, hemoglobin as the woman bleeds uh, vaginally. Apart from that, tachycardia, of course, may be seen due to low blood volume. And it comes as uh, a compensatory mechanism by the heart as it tries to pump fast to uh, supply adequately blood to all parts of the body. You may also see other symptoms such as fatigue due to severe anemia as well as restlessness due to cerebral hypoxia. So those are some of the symptoms that may be seen in a woman who has experienced postpartum hemorrhage. So we can go to question C, uh, which is saying explain five causes of postpartum hemorrhage. So with uh, question C, the first um, uh, cause that we can talk about for PPH is, of course, tears or lacerations of the birth canal. So in this particular case, this is where the vagina, cervix, or the uterus is severely traumatized, leading to rupture of the blood vessels within uh, the structures, resulting in bleeding uh, vaginally. So with tears or laceration, it means that the blood vessels themselves are exposed and then this woman will bleed out to, uh, to death if there's no cardinal interventions that are done immediately. Then apart from that, the other cause can, also, uh, can of course be a retained product of conception. So when we talk about retained product of conception, of course, we can talk about um, maybe there's a uh, part of the placenta that, that, that has been retained or membranes have been retained, or anything of the uh, of the conception product of, of conception that has been retained, which which should have come out after the baby is out or during uh, labor. So 
So in this particular case, we find that the product of conception uh, uh, may uh, be retained within the uterus and can cause poor uterine contractions in which there will be poor or no contractions, uh, or no contraction rather to the blood vessels and this may lead to excessive bleeding. Apart from that, of course, multiple pregnancies where a woman uh, carries two or more fetuses which are likely to cause over distension of the uterine muscles and this may cause exhaustion of the uterus co uh, leading to a tonic uterus and in a tonic uterus you find that there is poor uh, uterine contractions and this may fail uh, in this particular uterus it may fail to arrest the hemorrhage apart from that of course a tonic uterus itself where the muscles of the uterus are over distended leading to exhaustion of the uterus and um, in this particular case this woman uh, can bleed out to death because the, the, the muscles of the uterus may be unable to contract uh, blocking the blood vessels from excessively uh, bleeding. Apart from that a ruptured uterus of course where there is a complete separation of the wall of the uterus across it's with this resulting in rupture of blood vessels and this may now lead to postpartum hemorrhage. Apart from that, of course, the other and uh, last cause among others that we can talk about is use of instrument, uh, instruments when delivering. And in this particular case, this is where um, the delivery is conducted by the use of instruments such as the vacuum extraction or the obstetric forceps which may in the process cause actual tears or lacerations to the birth canal and this may actually lead to bleeding. So that is uh, about some of the causes of postpartum hemorrhage. Okay, we can move on and look at question D, which is talking about uh, uh, describing the management of uh, Mrs., uh, um, Mrs. Olivia in details. So when it comes to PTH, of course, it is an emergence. But as usual, when you are writing any management, you need to start with M's. So in terms of M's, you can talk about to resuscitate uh, the woman uh, in order to avoid maternal death. You can say uh, to arrest hemorrhage. Apart from that, you can talk about to promote uh, a quick uh, recovery or relieve symptoms of um, of PTH and you can talk about uh, preventing complications such as the Sheehan's uh, syndrome which is commonly seen in PTH. Then from there your first heading of course is going to be patient assessment and resuscitation. So in this particular case you can uh, say on patient assessment and resuscitation just uh, a few points under that heading you can say I will shout for help by mentioning PTH to mobilize more staff so that appropriate and quick nursing interventions can be instituted. Then from there, your next heading is going to be airway. So you are resuscitating and the first heading is going to be airway. And on airway, you can say, I will assess the airway for patency and ensure that uh, the patient is positioned correctly in recumbent position uh, with the head turned to one side to promote drainage of oral secretions. Apart from that, you can do the after sanctioning of secretions to promote a patenty airway. Then from there, the next heading is breathing. And on breathing, you can say, I will assess the breathing status by observing the rate and depth of respiration. Apart from that, you can also check the oxygen saturation levels by using a pulse oximeter. And uh, if the oxygen saturation is below 90%, of course, you will give supplemental oxygen. And the other point, of course, you can talk about giving the actual oxygen, of which you can give uh, 3 to 5 liters of oxygen per minute to promote tissue perfusion. Then, of course, you can also talk about uh, uh, positioning uh, uh, the patient correctly to promote full lung expansion uh, uh, and also because if you put for example the patient after resuscitation uh, or they are stable you put them in semi-fowlers this, this will ensure that the lung 
can easily uh, be spent allowing air entry as well as uh, exhaustion of uh, carbon dioxide. So those are some of the points that we can talk about on breathing. Then the next heading is uh, circulation. So on circulation, you can say I will check the pulse and blood pressure to rule out shock and assess the level of dehydration by checking for skin chaga and sunken eyes or dry lips. You can also say I will quickly cannulate the, uh, the woman and commence fluids intravenously to restore intravascular volume and correct shock. Then apart from that, you can say I will elevate the foot end of the bed to promote blood flow to vital organs of the body such as the lungs, brain, and the heart, and I will cover the patient with extra linen to ensure that the patient is kept warm. So those are some of the points that you can talk about and intravenous fluids that you can give, of course, you can give normal saline. Uh, even if, if there is electrolyte imbalance, you give Ringer's lactate and also dextrose for energy. Then apart from that, the next heading that you're going to have is arrest hemor hemorrhage. So in arresting hemorrhage here, you're going to say, I'll carry out a rapid assessment to ascertain the possible cause of postpartum hemorrhage and as well as just to assess the general condition of the woman. And you can say, I'll manage um, Mrs. Olivia according to the cause as follows. And you have a tonic uterus. So the following headings i'll mention the four under arresting hemorrhage but if in the scenario they have specified the cause of pth meaning you just mention that particular cause but if they have not specified you need to have all these headings mentioned so after uh, on arresting hemorrhage of course the first heading under arresting hemorrhage will be a tonic uterus so in terms of a tonic uterus you're going to say I will rub the uterus abdominally to promote uterine contractions. And if bleeding does not stop, I will administer oxtocin to international units, intramuscular, and reassess bleeding. And this will help to initiate uterine contractions and arrest the hemorrhage. Apart from that, the other point you can say if bleeding is not arrested, I will administer 20 international units in normal cell line to run at 60 drops per minute. And if this continues, you can say I will administer oxytocin intravenously. Um, I mean, I will uh, administer oxytocin yeah, intravenously to run at 210 drops per minute. And then if bleeding does not stop, you can just prepare the woman for hysterectomy. Uh, because um, uh, it means that this woman may actually die, so the only solution may be to remove the uterus. So that is about a tonic uterus, that is what you can do. Then apart from that, in cases of, um, in cases of uh, retained product of conception, so in this particular case, you can say, I will remove blood clot by massaging the uterus, and also by removing the manual using gloved hand to promote uterine contractions. And apart from that, you can say if the placenta is retained, I will carry out manual removal of the placenta to promote uterine contractions. And if possible, I will catheterize the woman to empty the urinary bladder as a full bladder may actually prevent contractions which may aid um, in expulsion of product of conception. Then apart from that, of course, you can just also give oxytocin to promote uterine contraction. Then in case hemorrhage is caused by tears and laceration of the birth canal, you can say I will assess the extent of tears or lacerations and the site of tears to help determine the level of management such as suturing of the third degree, which may need be needed. Then apart from that, you can say I will suture any tears um, involving the perineum, vagina, and the cervix if, um, uh, if present so as to like get the blood vessels in order to arrest the hemorrhage. So those are some of the points that you can put under tears or laceration. 
the other the last heading under arresting uh, hemorrhage is the ruptured uterus so in case the client has a ruptured uterus we are going to say i will prepare uh, mrs olivia for emergency hysterectomy to quickly arrest the hemorrhage apart from that you can also say i will do hemoglobin uh, estimations i will do hemoglobin estimations to rule out anemia Apart from that, you can also do grouping and cross match to identify uh, the client's blood type in case there is need of blood in transfusion. You can also check the clotting time to rule out um, you know, the bleeding time, and you can also insert the nasogastric tube so as to empty or aspirate gastric content to uh, prevent aspiration or pneumonia. And you can just say, I'll carry out all the physical preparations in readiness for an emergency surgery. So those are some of the points that you can have under ruptured uterus. So from there, after you mention um, headings under arresting bleeding, it means that now you can go to sub subsequent care. And under subsequent care, the first heading is uh, environment. So on environment, you can say I will admit uh, the woman in postnatal ward for specialized midwifery care. You can also say I will put uh, Mrs. Olivia near the nurse's bay for closer monitoring of the client's condition. And you can also say I will ensure that uh, the, womb, the room is um, uh, well lit for easy observations and carrying out um, procedures. And you can also talk about ensuring that the room is clean by performing or doing daily dump dusting to prevent harboring of microorganisms which may cause uh, preperial sepsis or nosocomial infections. Apart from that, you can switch on the nearby heater to ensure that the room is kept warm and prevent the client from developing uh, hypothermia because naturally women go into coldness during labor it's a normal mechanism therefore you need to ensure that the room is kept warm apart from that you can just talk about ensuring that the room is quiet enough to and this will promote rest which promotes a quick recovery you can also talk about ensuring that the room is well ventilated uh, to promote air circulation then after environment, of course, you can talk about psychological care. And in terms of psychological care, you can say, I will admit the woman in the postnatal ward for specialized care. And apart from that, you can say, I will ensure that the, woman, uh, is, uh, the woman's general condition is okay and the bleeding has stopped. Uh, and you reassure this woman that these things have been attended to so as to reduce the psychological tension. And you can also just tell the woman about the cause of bleeding uh, uh, so as uh, to reduce any misconception and just to promote awareness of the condition. You can also allow the woman to ask questions in order to correct any misconception about the condition. You can also talk about other points such as involving the significant others such as the husband or the mother for social support and this actually may reduce stress. So you can talk about these and many other points. Then apart from that you can talk about promoting rest and in terms of promoting rest you can say I will uh, confine the woman to total bed rest to reduce oxygen demand as a hypoxemia as well as a, uh, this can be done to promote uh, quick wound healing or recovery apart from that of course you can talk about uh, ensuring that the environment is noise free uh, and you, apart from that you can talk about ensuring that um, you carry out all related procedures in block and this prevents or reduces unnecessary disturbing of the patient and uh, thereby promoting uh, rest which promotes recovery and you can also talk about encouraging the relatives and uh, friends to avoid visiting the patient unnecessary uh, and less to stipulated visiting hours so as to promote rest and you can give 
prescribed um, prescribed sedatives such as the other pump uh, to sedate the patient and promote rest. Then apart from that, the next heading is observation that you can talk about. And on observation, you can say I observe the general condition of the patient to determine the level of full consciousness. And you can also say I will measure the vital signs such as temperature, pulse, respirations, and blood pressure uh, to detect any deviations from normal such as Sheehan's syndrome. And you can also say I will measure the temperature to detect any fever which may indicate presence of infection such as puterio sepsis. Then you can also measure the pulse rate to detect any deviation from the normal such as tachycardia which may be seen in hypovolemia and you can also measure the respirations to uh, rule out any respiratory distress so these are some of the points that you can talk about on observation and of course you need to also observe the prevaginal bleeding noting the amount and consistency as well as the color to rule out the continuous pph so those are some of the points among others that you can put on observation and then the next heading of course um, the next heading is nutrition and on nutrition you can say i will give the patient mixed diet which in proteins uh, such as carpenter to promote quick healing then apart from that you can say i'll give the client or the patient foods rich in carbohydrates such as nshima to promote energy as this will help in prevention of fatigue as well as avoid the woman from being weak and apart from that other points that you can talk about you can say i'll give foods rich in vitamins uh, to promote or increase the immune system uh, apart from that you can give attractive meals to promote intake of food and this also increases appetite Apart from that, the other points, of course, you can give oral fluids such as uh, fruit juices like yes drink to promote energy and other points, of course, can be mentioned. And after nutrition, you can talk about hygiene. And on hygiene, you can say I will assist the client uh, in the bed or, or you can perform assisted bed bath to promote hygiene. You can also encourage the woman by performing or encouraging six baths. And the six baths uh, will also promote uh, and, uh, uh, hygiene as well as promote uh, contraction of the cervix as well as uh, the vulva to return into its normal non-gravity state. Apart from that, you can change fold linen to promote comfort and you can perform vulva swabbing to promote hygiene. You can provide um, a pad to prevent uh, dripping of blood and you can just encourage uh, uh, general uh, cleanliness by ensuring that the woman cleans the, uh, the vulva from front to back. So those, uh, the last heading, those are the points you can have on hygiene and the last heading you can have of course is elimination. And on, on elimination, you can say, I'll check the urine output and compare to the input using a fluid balance chart so as to rule out fluid overload or dehydration. You can also check bowel opening to rule out intestinal obstruction or to rule out constipation as well. So that is the management for our postpartum hemorrhage that you can give to Mrs. Olivia. So we can move on to our last question and our last question is saying explain five ways through which PPH can be prevented during antenatal care as well as labor. So during antenatal care you can of course prevent PPH through uh, antenatal care services. In this regard uh, you can say I will provide skilled antenatal care services to the woman in order to identify any predisposing factors or any causes such as multiple pregnancies, polyhydraminos, as well as ground mouth parity, so that necessary interventions are carried out, such as cesarean section and active management of third stage of full labor, and this can prevent PPH. Apart from that, 
The other way of preventing PPH is active management of third stage of labor, where you can say I'll manage third stage of labor by giving of stocin so as to promote uterine contractions as this will help or aid in arresting any hemorrhage. You can also ensure that you use the other point. You can talk about use of skilled delivery. Here you can encourage only skilled health workers such as clinic officers, midwives, nurses, and doctors to conduct deliveries. And here you can ensure that you use the skilled uh, personnel as this will enable uh, easy identification of possible causes and be able to carry out the uh, carry out uh, uh, proper interventions. Apart from that, you can talk about use of uh, photograph. So in terms of use of photograph, you can say I will encourage all health personnel, especially the midwives and nurses, to use the photograph as this will help to identify obstructed labor as well as prolonged labor, which may lead to severe vaginal bleeding after delivery. The last one among others, you can talk about adequate staffing. And in terms of adequate staffing, you can say I will encourage labor to have enough and skilled health personnel, especially midwives and obstetricians, as this will help to give sufficient midwifery care for the woman in labor. So those are some of the points that you can talk about uh, or ways through which PPH can be prevented during antenatal care and labor. Talk to you next.